Okay, so we're diving into Emichi 2BV1 today. Right, getting into the nitty gritty of this new model. It's causing a stir because it searches documents, well, differently. Yeah, think searching inside screenshots or even diagrams. And not just keywords, but asking actual questions. And in multiple languages too. So it understands the text and do with visuals on a page. That's the key here. No more just keyword limitations. So I can ask, show me Q3 sales figures and bam, there's the slide. Precisely, even in a huge presentation. Talk about a time saver. So how does it handle all that visual data? Well, the efficiency is pretty impressive. Meaning? Millions of pages embedded in a small space works even on devices with limited storage. Wow, okay. They use this Matryoshka representation learning, shrinks the size of embeddings without sacrificing much accuracy. Like those Russian nesting dolls. Smaller, but still, everything's there. Exactly. And the creator even experimented with image resizing. To make it even better. Found a custom method that boosts performance even further. Real attention to detail. Very cool. Okay. But how they train it on all this visual stuff? Combination of web scraping, AI-generated queries, and a system for classifying text density. AI-generated queries. Yeah, use another AI to create tons of different search queries, all sorts of topics, document types, and for like two euros. Whoa, that's wild using AI to train AI. But does it really work in real world situations? Great question. Benchmarks are impressive, especially with binary embeddings, even beat out a popular model from Cohere. Sounds promising. But the creators vary upfront that their benchmarks might not reflect every scenario. They really encourage users to test it on their own data. That's honest, at least. So how hard is it to use this model? Do I need a supercomputer or something? Not at all. Clear instructions are provided for using it with Hugging Face Transformers. So not too complicated for those of us who are um, less technically inclined. And they even found that using VLLM can make it even faster. So speed and D accessibility. That opens up possibilities for a lot of people. Absolutely. And that's where things get really exciting. Hold on. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a second to digest all of this. We'll be right back to explore the potential of Megatee's 2BV1. Imagine digging through a massive engineering report to find one tiny but crucial diagram, or a historian trying to decipher a handwritten note on some old document. Painstaking work, for sure. Megatee's 2BV1 could speed that up tremendously. Less time hunting, more time actually analyzing. That's got to be a game changer for research. Oh. And this multi-language thing we touched on. Huge. It really breaks down those language barriers. Think about it. A global database of scientific papers, instantly searchable regardless of what language they're in. Wow. That's next level collaboration right there. It really changes how we think about organizing information too. Keywords and folders might not cut it anymore. Got to get more visual right. Precisely. As this tech becomes the norm, we'll need new ways to interact with our data. It's not just finding info, it's understanding it. And maybe spotting connections we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Absolutely. Text and visuals analyzed together. You start to see those hidden patterns. New insights emerge. Medicine, history, even art. The possibilities are huge. It's like having an AI research assistant working right alongside you. Exactly. And this is still early days. Multimodal understanding is only going to get more powerful. It's a glimpse into a future where information is more accessible, more connected, more meaningful. But all this power. Yeah. It makes you think about the future of work, you know. If machines can do this kind of analysis, what happens to human skills? Yeah. Big questions to ponder. How do we adapt education? How do we value human expertise in this new landscape? And on a more creative level, what about originality? If AI is helping generate ideas, where does that leave human creativity? We're going to have to wrestle with these questions. No easy answer. But it's a conversation we need to have now while this yeah. tech is still developing. Absolutely. It's not about fearing the future. It's about shaping it. Yeah. Using this technology responsibly to benefit everyone. Education and open discussion are yeah, key, yeah. right? So we understand both the potential and the limits of what we're dealing with. Couldn't agree more. That's what this deep dive is all about. Encouraging right. critical thinking. Helping people navigate these complex new technologies. So not just the how of MCD2 BV1, but the why and the what next. Exactly. The societal impact, the ethical considerations. It's a lot to unpack. Well said. We've given our listeners a lot to think about today. And we hope they'll keep thinking about it. This conversation's just getting started. We've talked about finding info faster, 
But what about those times when you don't even know what you're looking for? Those moments where you're just exploring, hoping to stumble on something interesting. Ah, the serendipity of discovery. Exactly. Can this model help with that? It's where things get really fascinating. Think of a designer, right? They're looking for a new logo and a feel. Okay, yeah. Instead of searching modern or minimalist, which is so limiting. Right. They could feed MCD2B V1 a mood board. Images, textures, the whole vibe they want. Oh, I like that. And the model analyzes those visuals, then suggests designs, patterns, all from this huge database matching that aesthetic. So like an AI brainstorming partner. And this could go beyond just design, right? Absolutely. Imagine a historian researching a period, but they're not limited to just texts. They could include artwork, architecture. Fashion even. Make it CDBV1, analyzes it all, and boom, you see visual connections, patterns that reveal those deep cultural trends. It's like giving machines a way to see the world like we do. And with that comes, well, a whole lot of possibilities, but also some big questions, right? For sure. If machines are getting this good at connecting the dots, what happens to human creativity? Yeah, that's a big one. Does AI replace us or does it work with us? It's a tool, ultimately. It's about finding that balance between human and machine intelligence, using both to our advantage. To achieve something truly remarkable, hopefully. Precisely. So wrapping up our deep dive into Megidi 2BV1, we're at a turning point in how we understand information. Lots of challenges, sure, but the potential benefits are huge. It's on us to use this tech wisely, to make info more accessible, more meaningful for everyone. Couldn't have said it better myself. We've covered a lot today. The technical how-tos, but also those bigger questions, the impact this has on us all. It's not just about embracing the new. It's about thinking critically about what this new means for us all. And we hope this has been a good starting point for that conversation. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone.